the domestication of the donkey. So first, we'll start out with a little bit of a background, which we most of us probably know most of this, but um, so the donkey, otherwise known as the ass, or also in America, it's often referred to as the burro, is a member of the horse family. <clears throat> now the the word donkey actually refers to the domesticated group um, and not the wild ones in Africa. So the donkey, the domesticated donkey is the subspecies of the African wild ass, which is pictured to the right, but it is still speculated if it really is a subspecies because some listed as its own species completely. Um, the last few years there has been some studies about that and it's still, it's not for sure really nailed down yet. So the male donkey is called a Jack, the female is a Jeanette or a Jenny, and the baby is a colt. When, even though horses and donkeys are separate species, um, they can have babies together, but those babies, those offspring usually are infertile. So when that happens, and an offspring of a male and a, don a male donkey and a female horse, that is called a mule, and the offspring of a male horse and a female donkey is called a hinny. The beginning of the domestication of the donkey occurred roughly between 5,000 and 6,000 years ago, somewhere in northeast Africa, as you see there's a map on the right. Scientists have really pinpointed that Nubia, which is now northern Sudan, or directly south of the border of Egypt, um, that's the main beginning of using donkeys. Um, scientists have also guessed that there may have been separate but similar do domestication events of donkeys in the one area, which really means that two groups of people started to take these wild animals and put them to use for themselves around the same time. Um, and there, there's mm, different species that, of donkeys that were probably used at around the same time as well, including the Somalia wild ass and the Nubian wild ass, as you see in the pictures. Now when donkeys were first domesticated, it is assumed that African pastoralists really began that process which are sheep and cattle farmers. Um, now that the Sahara Desert, or what we know, I should say, is the Saharan Desert, used to be really fertile and luscious green and had plenty of water. But the climate began to change and it began to become more arid and dry, which meant the people living there had to really begin to change how they, everything, their lifestyle, how they ate and farmed and everything. And this change in climate is one of the reasons that scientists are guessing for the first uses of donkeys. Um, the donkeys were really well equipped for these dry areas. They really didn't need much water or vegetation to work and um, survive. And uh, with this domestication of the donkeys, this would become the first transportation of goods off of human backs. So other uses that these ancient Egyptians used for the donkeys, they'd use them for long routes between Egyptians and Sumerians. They would use them to plow and seed the Nile floodplain. In other areas, they would use the donkeys as mil for milk. Their milk was really good and rich and had a lot of sugar and protein in it. Um, they were also used as food and medicine and cosmetics to promote white skin, which um, the Egyptians were really into makeup back then. In 2002, archaeologists were unearthing an ancient tomb next to a ceremonial site of an early king of Egypt. They were expecting to find 
personal belongings to this king, but instead they found ten very well-preserved, intact donkeys. These donkeys, after examination, showed that their bones were worn down from heavy burdens on their back. Their shoulders and hips were rough and worn, and they showed signs of arthritis. Now, this was the first definitive evidence of the use of animals for transport. Or I should say the first, not the first, but like the earliest. General, These donkeys were generally healthy and they were taken care of, which, but they were worn down from work, which really shows that they were used. This burial area where these donkeys were found shows that the donkeys had high status. They weren't just tossed aside and left to rot, but they were entombed like kings and other high-profile people of the time. Now, the interesting thing is that before this discovery, a lot of the scientists thought that as the domestication of an animal occurred, that physical changes in the bodies were seen quite rapidly. And for a long time, they've used this as markers for domestication, looking at other domestication of animals. But these 10 donkeys, they looked exactly the same as the wild ass of the time, but they were used by the people, which shows that instead of a, such a quick physical change, once animals were domesticated, it, it's, that, that doesn't really happen. It's more of a slowly evolving physical change. Now, I shoved this slide in the middle of the presentation because this is just something to think about, which I found interesting. Now, we just talked about the very beginning of when donkeys were used by humans and what was found by studying these donkeys entombed and um, um, sketched into the Egyptians' walls was that the Egyptians took care of them. And yeah, they used them. And they were tired animals, I'm sure, but they took care of them, they fed them well, and they gave them a good burial site. But over the years, the physical changes, like most other domesticated animals, did take place. And donkeys began to be smaller and less fine-limbed. Soon, donkeys were associated, as we'll talk about in a minute, as more... As poor and as a stupid animal. Ancient Greeks even portrayed donkeys as stupid. Aesop's fable would often talk about donkeys and kind of downplay them. So what happened? How did donkeys become from so high of a ranked animal to so low? Now there's no like real answer. I just I just thought it'd be fun to think about. All right. So, Egypt has been using the donkeys, and now they're going to start spreading throughout the world. The next place the donkeys reached was the Middle East. Mesopotamia began to be a really big breeding hub, and that's where they began developing different varieties with selective breeding. Damascus was known for the large white riding asses and... Uh, Soon they, that city was known as the City of Asses. In Syria, there was more breeding, and they bred a more gentler donkey for women to ride. Muscat and Yemen, there was more breeding, a strong, light-colored donkey still used today for caravans and ridings. So the use of donkeys really took off, and domesticated donkeys made their way into Europe, first stopping in Greece. They began, they became associated with Dionysus, the god of wine. Um, it's really just speculated why, but the Greeks exported vines on donkeys, so they were carrying grapevines a lot, so maybe... Somehow that evolved into donkeys and Di Dionysus and so on. The Romans continued the spread of donkeys by taking them to France and Spain, and soon they were in all corners of the empire. 
also took the donkeys a long time to get across the ocean. It was only about 500 years ago when they finally made it to the Americas. Christopher Columbus in 1495 on his second voyage brought six donkeys with him, four Jacks and two Jenny. In Hispaniola, which is Dominican Republic or Haiti, um, they bred mule those six mules for Conquistador's expedition. Ten years after that, they had 12 females and three males, and those 15 donkeys arrived in Mexico for more breeding. Now back then, females were usually used for riding because they were just nicer to ride and more tame, and males were the strong ones and were used for pack animals. They're also often used in silver mines. In really recent times, the donkey finally made it to the United States. I mean, basically 200 years ago, really recent. The gold rushes brought most of the donkeys into the United States from Mexico as pack animals. That's when the lone prospector and his donkey really became kind of a symbol of the West. The donkeys, important, they were really important in early mining operations. They did a lot. They carried wood and water, and they pulled machinery, and they pulled carts of ore and rock in and out of mines. But then, soon after they were first introduced here, the railroads really ended most of their use in the U.S., a lot of those were turned loose, and what to do with those donkeys really has become controversial, even, I mean, up to today. Donkeys, which it's more accurate in the United States to call them burrows, and also horses, disrupt the natural environment. All of those that are set loose because their owners don't have don't have a need for them anymore or just it's too expensive to take care of them they just kind of let them loose there are all these wild horses and burrows now that really aren't domesticated anymore they're really running free and doing good for themselves pop they're reproducing like crazy the problem is they aren't native here i mean they're quite new to the u.s and these animals are fighting over, they're fighting with native species for the limited resources of water and food, and oftentimes they win. The burrows, and also horses, are blamed for the reduction of some of our native animal populations, as in the bighorn sheep. So to really manage all these wild animals, the National Park Service and the BLM, are supposed to take care of it all. In 1971, there was a Wild Free Ro Roaming Horse and Burrow Act, and this really allows the two departments to get together every once in a while, and they round up wild burrows and horses. They capture probably about 9,000 yearly. And what they do then, oftentimes, they, they try to get people, I mean, what they want to do, they're trying to get people to adopt these animals that they have caught. But sometimes they just are sitting in basically a lot for a while until they can really get people to adopt them. And this is a big controversy now because there's a lot of people that don't like that these animals are being captured. They think it's animal cruelty and blah blah blah, but at the same time they're doing a lot of damage to the environment and hurting other animal populations because they really are kind of like an intrusive species. Okay, donkeys today. Total around the world there's 40 million. There are not a lot in North America at all. There is probably only around 0.1% of that 40 million in North America. And most of them are pets or running around wild and causing problems like discussed in the slide previous. Most of them are in underdeveloped countries as pack animals and they're still 
working working donkeys usually thought of are thought of to be belonging to the poor and underprivileged. Like we really don't have any need for donkeys because we have cars and trucks and trains and lots of things. But there are widely used in other parts of the world. And here is an embarrassing, really old picture of me next to donkey. And some sources. So thank you, everyone. I hope you learned a little bit about donkeys.